Hello class and welcome to section 3.2 which is about relations and functions. By the end of today's lesson you will be able to identify, evaluate, graph, and write linear functions. In terms of the graphing, I'm not going to specifically cover that during this lesson. When we were talking in chapter 2 about graphing equations in the form y equals mx plus b, that's the same sort of graphing method that you will be using during this section. B is your starting point, M is your slope, and using that information to continue. So I'm not going to recover the graphing part, but everything else will be covered during this lesson. So first off, a linear function is a graph whose function is a line. So if we go back to chapter 2, all of those different graphs that you were doing, all of those formed a line. So all of those equations are types of linear functions. One specific thing we do with functions is use a method for writing variables as a function of another variable, and we call that function notation. Essentially what function notation means is in the last chapter you saw the equation written as y equals 3x minus 8. So that's how you were used to seeing it. This function notation simply means that we are changing it from y, from a second variable, to be written as one variable. So what it's saying is we have function f, that is this equation, with variable x. The f is just what we're using to name the function. I could have written function g of x equals 3x minus 8. The reason we often do this is because we're going to start dealing with more than one equation at a time and we want to be able to tell the difference between our equations. So I could have the equation f of x equals 3x minus 8 and I might have a different equation in my problem that says g of x is negative 2 thirds x plus 4. So it's a way that we can use multiple equations but have a way to differentiate in between which one you are using. A nice visual is that x is going to be inputted into your little function machine, if you remember those from math boxes in third, fourth, fifth grade. And then f of x is your output. That's the answer. So we're not changing how we're solving the problems. We're just changing the notation that we're using. So, for example, if I have f of x is equal to negative 4x plus 7, find f of 5. What this is telling me to do is pick out function f. Right now we only have one function to pick from. So we're going to use function f and we're going to plug in the number 5. So we would say f of 5 is equal to negative 4. Plugging in 5 in the place of x plus 7. Now on this side we need to actually solve. So negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus 7 gives us negative 13. So f of 5, function f, when I plug in the number 5, has an answer of negative 13. Go ahead and try this one on your own. When we plug it in, we plug in negative 3, we solve the right side of the equation, f of negative 3 is negative 39. Another thing you might see is some additional information outside of a number. So what this is asking us to do is use function f, plug in 2, and once we have that answer, then we're going to take away 1. So what this is going to look like when we set this up is we're going to say f of 2 minus 1 is equal to, now we're going to write down the f of 2 part. So negative 4 times 2, which is going in the place of x, plus 7. And then at the end of the problem, it's asking us to subtract 1. So if there's anything written outside of this parentheses, it's going to be written after the problem. So we're going to take f of 2 and then subtract 1. Again, we're going to solve that right side of the equation. So I have negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8 plus 7 minus 1. Negative 8 plus 7 is going to give us negative 1. And then we've got negative 1 minus 1. So our final answer is going to say f of 2 minus 1 
is equal to negative 2 because negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Plug in for 4 and then you subtract 3 and you have that plus 1 on the end. When you solve that, you get an answer of 46. Another thing that we're going to do with functions is be able to identify their rules. So if we look at this first um, top set of table information, we're going to look first for our change in y. So to get from 7 or to get from 17 to 32, I went up by 15. To get from 32 to 47, again, I went up by 15. So I've got a consistent pattern of going up by 15. Up top, I'm going up by 1. If you remember from the last section, our slope is our change in our y, our change in output, over change in input. So our slope value, 15 over 1. If you wanted to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you're going to get to this same result. From there, we're going to go ahead and say that y equals 15x. If you left it as 15 over 1, that's fine, but you can simplify it. And then we need to figure out our plus v, b value. Pick out any point from the problem. Personally, I like to use the first one because that's generally my smallest numbers. So I've got 17 equals 15 times 1 plus b. 15 times 1 is going to give me 15. So I have 17 plus 15, or excuse me, 17 equals 15 plus b. Once I subtract b from both sides of my, or excuse me, subtract 15, I'm able to solve for b and get 2. So my answer, my rule for this is y equals 15x plus 2. So essentially what it's asking you to do is find a linear equation. A function rule should be written in slope-intercept y equals mx plus b format. There's another way, which we used last chapter, that we could write it out and solve for this rule. Again, the first part, you could set y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or you can just look for your pattern. In this case, you're going up by 3 on your y's, up by 1 on your x's, so your slope part is going to be 3 over 1, or just 3. So we've got y, and then we can use our point slope form as our starting point. So y minus 1 is equal to 3, parentheses x minus x1. And then you can rearrange that equation by distributing. So y minus 1 is equal to 3x minus 3. And then you can go ahead and add your 1 to both sides, giving you an equation for this table of y is equal to 3x minus 2. So you can use either format, either solving for b or using point slope, to help you get to that final answer in y equals mx plus b form. Go ahead and try this one on your own. When you are done with the problem, you're going to find that y is equal to 7x plus 9. I showed the solving for b part. Totally fine if you went through and did the point slope form. Last thing we're going to talk about is applying linear equations. So this is going to be taking our word problems and turning it into a linear function that we can use. So a chairlift travels at 6 miles per hour and takes 15 minutes to reach the top of a mountain. It begins 0.5 miles above the base of a mountain. How many, or excuse me, how far from the base of the mountain will it be after 10 minutes? So our important thing is to pick out the key pieces of information that's going to help us write our equation. So we need an equation in y equals mx plus b format. In this word problem, they give us all of that information. Remember your slope, that's going to be how much you're changing by over the course of your time. So if we read the problem... 6 miles per hour, that's going to tell us how fast we are moving. So, I'm going to say y equals 6x. And then we need to figure out where we started at. The starting point of our chairlift is 0.5 miles 
above the base of the ground. So we've got our equation y equals mx plus b. That Now we need to use it. What it's asking us is how long does it take the chair, or excuse me, how far up will it be after 10 minutes? One key thing here, if you look at our speed, that's in miles per hour. Our time is in minutes. One of the biggest things you have to pay attention to in these problems is making sure that you're in the same amount of time. So 10 minutes, there's 60 minutes in an hour, so we need one-sixth of an hour. That's what we're going to plug into our equation. So y is equal to 6 times one-sixth plus 0 0.5. When I do 6 times one-sixth, I end up with an answer of just 1. So y equals 1 plus 1.5. And then I'm going to go ahead and add those together giving me a final answer that after 10 minutes, the chairlift will be 1.5 miles from the base. So again, write your equation, pay attention that you are using the information in its correct units, miles per hour, needed to change our minutes per hour, or minutes into fractions of an hour, and then be able to solve the problem. Go ahead and try this one on your own. For this one, we've got a starting point of negative three degrees, and we're going up by two degrees each hour. From 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., that's eight hours. Those are already matching units, so I can just plug in eight, and I end up with 13 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please let me know when you get to class.